A postdoc is what many people do after a PhD so that they can end up in an independent research career in a university. The problem is, is that in the past, these positions used to be temporary. They used to be one or two years and it was kind of like a holding pattern for having to wait for like someone to retire or for a position to open up at a university. Unfortunately, over time, Postdocs have become more permanent for many people. You may have heard of the postdoc treadmill. That is where you get a PhD, you get a postdoctoral research position at a university or research institution, and then you are on this kind of like postdoc path forever. And it was never meant to be for that. It was meant to be for like a short period of time while you kind of build up a little bit more evidence about you as an independent researcher. Unfortunately, people can end up on this postdoc treadmill for years. The longest that I've ever heard about is a 10 year postdoc treadmill where people just get extension after extension of their postdoc sort of um, uh, position so that then they end up not as an academic, but as this weird kind of like glorified research assistant for someone else's research. So you have to be very, very careful about staying in the postdoc for too long because you get kind of labeled as a postdoc rather than someone who's looking to become an independent researcher. So I found a paper published in Science about the evolution of postdocs. And there are a few things that really stand out to me in this. Have a read of it, I'll leave a link in the description. But essentially, there are moments like this. As years go by, postdocs tend to see their positions as semi-permanent jobs rather than defined periods in which to advance their careers. And that is the definition of the postdoc treadmill. You end up just being sort of like given money to extend your position time and time again. And it can be good because you've got money, but bad because you're not getting anywhere. You're just working hard for someone else's career again, just like you've done in your PhD and other sort of academic positions. It is really a time where you have to try to bust out of that kind of perception of yourself and how others perceive you. And you really need to uh, start focusing on bringing in money for yourself and launching your own academic, your independent academic career. And that's really hard when you're actually employed as a postdoc to do work on other people's stuff. When this was written in 2004, you can see that 80% of postdocs were paid from a principal investigator's research grant. And here is the graph showing that. We've essentially got all of these postdocs that are no longer on fellowships or traineeships with their own money, but actually they are just working for someone else. And it's just crazy that the university has seen an opportunity for these desperate people who are like highly, highly trained and have got loads of very specific skills to keep them on because they're clearly valuable, but not give them the reward of having their own permanent position at a university. So here it said, in earlier times, postdocs were expected to have independent research projects with guidance from mentors. Many postdocs were supported by portable competitive fellowships awarded by them directly. So they weren't sort of like dependent on their supervisor for money. They were starting their own independent research career. Um, but over the time, that shifted to just becoming like another part of a successful supervisor's grant and research. So that's kind of the biggest warning that I can give about being a postdoc is you need to go into it knowing that you can get trapped on this postdoc treadmill forever. And once you're there, it is really hard to get off. And so going in, making sure that from this get go, you're applying for your own grants, your own money, you're building up your own research career and you're not sort of like just relying on your principal supervisor to get you money, to keep you on, to extend your contract, because this really is a make or break moment for any academic career and the postdoc can be a bit of a trap. So how do you get out from being a postdoc on the postdoc treadmill. There are only two ways, and those are the two ways that universities love you. It's when you bring in money, and it's when you publish incredible amounts of work in as high 
impact factor journals as possible. That is the only way. And now what we've got at the end of a PhD are all these worn out, battle hardened people who now have to do even harder work to get an academic position. A PhD is no longer a ticket to anything, not a, a ticket to academic kind of uh, tenure. And that means you need to go into a postdoc and hit the ground running. Even if you are employed on someone else's grant, make sure you're applying for money. Publications are going to be the thing that dictates your career at this stage. Do not go in thinking, oh, I'll just kind of like, you know, I'll consider this an extension of my research uh, that I did in my PhD, or I'll see this as a paid sort of like, PhD when really it is anything but. This is a holding kind of pen for academics and only the most successful in terms of bringing in money and publishing papers will escape this den, this cage, this holding pen. So oh, it's tough because you need to do that. That is part of the game. And I'll tell you something now, even if you escape, it never ends. If, even if you are successful enough to leave the academic sort of holding zone of a postdoc, you have to always work harder to convince the university that you are worthwhile keeping around. The truth is, as well, that postdocs really don't pay that much. Considering now that you have done a bachelor's, you've probably done a master's, you've done countless years of a PhD, and now you're doing a postdoc, you'd expect that these were very well regarded and therefore well kind of compensated positions. They are not. I started at a 75,000 um, Australian dollars a year um, for my first postdoc, and that was way worse than anything I could find in industry as a chemist, as a explosives chemist in the mines. And the thing is, is that the postdoc positions, because they're only considered holding patterns, they're not really kind of like, you know, rewarded in a way that an actual professorship would, because you're still, strangely, and this blows my mind, still seen as an apprentice, despite all of this training, despite having produced a thesis, but despite having done like a PhD, you are still an apprentice in the eyes of supervisors and the academic system. So you're not paid as much. Let's go check out some postdoc salaries. So here we are, this is in Miami. Um, you can earn anywhere from $45,000 a year up to $87,000 US dollars a year. Um, and let's have a look at other places. So postdoctoral fellow in Australia. All right, so apparently it's a little bit better from when I first started, but it's anywhere from 83 to $108,000 uh, Australian dollars a year. So it's not super poorly paid, but like I said, considering how much effort it's taken to get to this stage, ah. Uh, it's just not enough, is it? And so the real truth about the postdoc is this is a make or break for those who want an academic career. You need to go in and you need to get the most out of your time as humanly possible. That is stressful. You have to give up sort of like other commitments in your life to make sure that you are able to produce papers, papers bring in money and uh, essentially prove that you are the best of the best, whatever that means. And I can tell you what that means. That means money and papers. So the decision to do a postdoc shouldn't be taken lightly. It is really important that you think about what the postdoc will do for your career and the things you need to achieve within the postdoc to make sure that you are able to escape this kind of postdoc treadmill. There will always be people with money willing to keep you on. Remember, you are now highly trained, you are highly specialized, and there is always a little bit of scunge money, is what one of my friends called it, um, to keep you around for another kind of like year, two years. But it's important that if you want a career in academic, you see this as a way to prove yourself further by getting publications and money. And if you struggle to bring in those two things within two to three years of starting a postdoc, it's probably time to consider leaving, unless you do wanna stay on as a postdoc forever. The problem is, is the longer you are a postdoc, 
the more people perceive you as a perpetual postdoc and therefore it's really hard to break out of that bubble because there's always money around to keep you on but there's never enough money to turn you into your own academic. You need to bring that in yourself. So there we have it. There's everything that you need to know about postdocs and whether or not they're good to do straight outside of your PhD. Let me know in the comments what you would add but also remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've got my Insider Forum as well and now there is a blog where I'm helping you make the most of your PhD in academia. And also remember to sign up for my free newsletter where you'll get everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more completely for free. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter. So go sign up now. Link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video.